Well, thank you so much guys for being here. I know it's a Sunday and everyone's busy and we've got assignment due on Monday. So I'm really appreciative and it's super encouraging that um, there's people who actually want to do this, especially with like everything that's going on in their own lives. So thank you so, so much. Um, basically, I've got a bunch of questions I want to ask you. Uh, the first one is, what were you doing previously to undertaking the course in environmental science and what inspired you to do so? Anyone can jump in whenever they want, by the way, so. Max, you already have on my screen, so do you want to start us off? <laughs> yeah, 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 no worries. So I came, so I, I come from Brisbane originally um and i spent pretty much all my school life and like childhood wanting to be a performer and so straight out of school i got into a course in um musical theater which is basically just like singing dancing and acting training and i did that and i actually finished that and it was fun it was good it was sometimes intense but mostly mostly fun um, and I always wanted to do that, but uh, I started to feel a little bit funny about musical theatre. I felt it was a little bit easy in terms of, like, it's just easy entertainment um, yeah. for, for mostly, I guess, rich Western people, Western <laughs> countries. And I think if you're a certain type of person, and this is no judgment on anyone's lifestyle choices, but if you're a certain, certain type of person, you feel you have this need to contribute something more um, with your life. And I wasn't really feeling that feeling of fulfillment doing that. And I came down to Melbourne to do more um, music and acting and stuff, but um, wasn't really enjoying auditioning for shows and things like that. And then, yeah, I can't remember why I enrolled in this course at Deakin. I can't remember. I just must, I think it was kind of on a whim. And then I got in and- um, Three years later. <laughs> three years later, almost about, to, almost about to graduate. But yeah, so that's what I was doing. That's what I was doing before. Cool. Um, so yeah, did you have any sort of background in environmental science beforehand? Um, no. No, I didn't even do really any sciences in like year 11 and 12 of high school or anything like that. But I've always loved animals. Yeah. Um, always loved animals. Yeah. Cool. That's super interesting. I didn't know that. I, although I, I genuinely thought that you had like a really vast experience in environmental science beforehand. And all right, who wants to uh, kick us off next? I'll go for it. Um... What did I do before? Well, I came into this course off a of gap year, but um, I deferred the course because I was already interested in pursuing it. Um, I, uh, as, uh, as a child and then a teenager, I spent a lot of time traveling with my family and then in my gap year doing a lot of traveling and seeing all the wonders of the earth and so i thought uh, uh, so that motivated me naturally i guess uh, to want to conserve those wonders uh, as it were <laughs> so yeah and that's how i got into it but um yeah uh, actually um, we might talk about this later but uh i had something to say about pe other people thinking about pursuing this uh uh, life trajectory and why maybe just being passionate about the natural environment or, or, or loving animals isn't enough because that's not necessarily what conservation biology is about, but we can get to that later. Okay, cool. Um, obviously you did biology at school. M not obviously, I just know that. <laughs> 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 You're all expected to know everything about Ido and his high school experience. Um, <laughs> Do you reckon that influenced your decision? Uh, definitely, yeah. I, I always loved biology and um, and evolution. I was always, uh, as an adamant atheist in my younger years, I was always <laughs> looking for an alternate explanation as, uh, as to why I'm here. And so evolution was always a good one. So I got interested in evolution since I was quite young. And so, yeah, evolution.
evolution is tied into biology and obviously into conservation as well so yeah, yeah that's why i was but yeah but actually the, the 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 main motivation was simply my love for being outdoors <laughs> so, yeah. yeah cool lillian do you want to go next sure um so i came straight from high school um and <laughs> <laughs> um but i'll talk a bit about how i ended up choosing the course um, so I always thought that I knew what I wanted to do. Um, for a lot of my schooling, I wanted to be a doctor, like a medical doctor. <laughs> and then probably in year 10, I thought, mm, not really what I want to do. So then I sort of thought maybe I'll do a Bachelor of Science because then I can go into whatever I want to at the end of that. Yeah. Um, and then so I decided exactly what I was doing, where I was going. Um, in year 12 so I knew all my friends were you know, freaking out looking at courses and I was like oh, sitting here like pretty happy knew where I was going what I was doing and then just one day it was probably May June I just decided that's not what I wanted to do and freaked out and started looking at every course just about um, and that's when I decided that I wanted to do Enviro um, because I love animals I love being outdoors and I wanted to do something that actually helped, like actually make a difference. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I initially had it in my mind that I wasn't going to go to Melbourne. Um, I'm from Bendigo. So I just had it in my brain. I was like, I'm not going to Melbourne, not going to Melbourne. So <laughs> I pushed this course aside. I knew it was there and I probably knew then that it was the right one. But I was like, you know what? It's in Melbourne. I'm not going. Um, but then I just kept thinking about it and I was like, no, that's the right one. <laughs> so yeah, it was just right. It just felt right. Cool. Um, so it was sort of just like off the cuff. It didn't, nothing really inspired you except like your previous love for the outdoors and animals. Yeah. Um, the practical aspect really also, um, drew me in the fact that there was so many opportunities for field work and practical work, um, to actually do something <laughs> yeah cool yeah I find that Deakin has a really good um, balance between practical and theory um, I've heard other people's experiences at different unis and different unis for different people but from what I've heard like some unis are too practical and some unis are really theory based so I think Deakin's like a really good balance between the two so you made a good decision <laughs> um, cool Jacob do you want to kick us off next yeah hey um... Yeah, so I have sort of always had a bit of a passion for the outdoors, sort of growing up, I'm originally from Tassie, so, yeah. um, and my dad's sort of like an avid bushwalker and, and sort of a bit of an outdoor man, sort of loves it, and I think from that, that's sort of grown my passion, because in year 12, I did environmental science and biology, and then after that, I took a gap year and worked in, as a, in a, for a subcontracting group, which um, was like subcontracted by... Um, like forestry companies and parks Tasmania to sort of do like measuring, collecting tree data and controlled burns and stuff like that. Cool. Um, with a intention of always going into environmental science after that. Um, yeah, so yeah, it sort of just all stemmed from being in a lucky enough situation to experience outdoors and like the environment and then sort of having those connections to places and wanting to help preserve them for everyone else to have shared experiences and stuff like that, I think. Right. And um, whereabouts yeah. in Tasmania were you based? Uh, I was based in Westbury, which is like a little town, sort of near like Liffey Falls region, but sort of, yeah, halfway between like um, Burnie and Launceston, sort of. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So you live in the dream down in Tassie, in the wilderness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was, so yeah, it wasn't like, it was sort of like little hobby farm sort of things. So we had like... Um, yeah, like cattle and, and sheep and chickens and sort of, yeah, big veggie gardens. Yeah. Cool. So, like, the whole time in U12, you knew you were going to head into something along the lines of this? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. I think sort of in U12, I didn't really know, but it was always, my answer was always, oh, something as long as I'm outside. <laughs> Easy. Hmm. Chloe, we've already heard a little bit from you in our last video, but... Let's just pretend we didn't have a have a chat already. <laughs> um, do you want to give us a feel? 
Yeah, sure. It's so nice to see everyone's face. Jake, you cut your hair. Um, it's been so long. Um, yeah, I don't. We talked the other day, so if you're interested, check that out. But um, I was an interior designer for three years before I did and went into environmental science. I had my gap year. And it was the course that I originally got into after year 12, but I put it off for a good few years, traveling and exploring that kind of creative side. Um, but yeah, it just kind of came down to, I think, mental stimulation and wanting to do something that had kind of real world implications and meant that I didn't have to be inside talking about tiles. But um, yeah, like, it was fun, but it just, this is a different part of my brain that I wanted to use. And I think that, um, yeah, it, it really, science kind of supports, obviously, a lot of the information that we have and a lot of the theories that we think. So contributing to that would be would be really great. Cool. Did you find that there were some, did you get, like, credit points that rolled over into your environmental science course? No, I didn't even ask. There could have been one subject, which was, like, sustainable materials and design yeah. and buildings and stuff like that. But, um, no, nah, I didn't bother. And I was going to be there for the three years anyway. So I wanted to soak it all up. Cool. Um, so, this question's for the group. Uh, did anyone have any expectations before going into whatever course you're studying? I know some people are, are you guys all studying um, conservation and wildlife biology or are some of you doing the sustainability course? I'm doing the sustainability course. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, I guess what was everyone's expect expectations, if you had any? I think, yeah, there was sort of wasn't a massive amount of expectations going into it I think for me, uh, yeah first uni degree um, so I was just really excited to learn and focus on an area that has been a passion for a long time and to really develop and meet other like-minded people and talk to lecturers who are I mean some of them are you know experts in their field and a, a wealth of knowledge and stories and so yeah. I was sort of just excited to sort of tap into that a little bit and yeah, I think that was sort of my main expectation. I guess that's that's almost like the best way to go into it with like zero expectations. Uh, yeah, I think for me, because me just enrolling in the course, it was so spontaneous, and then yeah, I I really had no idea what I was what I was in for. Uh, Lillian, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I don't really have any expectations because like coming straight out of high school, didn't know a heap about university, didn't know too many people other than my sister that had gone to uni. So apart from like expecting that I'd get to do some cool field work stuff, um, I didn't really have any expectations because I was just this naive little 18 year old <laughs> venturing off to Melbourne. Um, yeah. I'm surprised you came to, because are any of the other campuses closer to you? Um, they're probably about, this, Geelong's probably a bit further. Um, oh, yeah. it's about two hours to get from my house to Burwood, um, but Geelong is probably about two and a half hours. Okay. Um, yeah, and Warnable's like three and a half. Yeah, okay, my geography's just like out of whack. <laughs> Everyone's like, Alex, come on. <laughs> um, Ido, what about you? Uh, I didn't have much expectations either, but I did have, uh, I mean, I've, I only heard good things about university from my family, my parents and uh, all their family friends. And so uh, I found it to be quite different from the way they experienced it back in their day. But uh, yeah, so my expectations were only good and I was very excited to learn and learn one thing instead of uh, a whole range of things that you have to during your high school. So yeah, my expectation was that it was gonna be very enjoyable and indeed it has been. <laughs> that's good <laughs> okay um so next question is have you guys experienced any pressure while studying what you're studying i know that um uh, sorry i'm drinking tea and it's loose leaf um i know <laughs> i know that i felt a little bit of pressure particularly with some of the things that we're studying um you kind of just realize the scale at which things are damaged and um I remember at the end of first year I went through this period where there was like a couple of weeks where I just had like three breakdowns literally because of the environment and the state that it's in um 
not okay breakdowns is probably a little bit uh excessive but yeah i got really upset at some point so i was just wondering if you guys had any similar experiences don't know if i'd call it similar but something that i found like that um you know puts pressure on us as people who are studying environmental science is that well for me at least the people around me my friends and my family they come to me for like my opinions or almost thinking I'm an expert on some topics yeah it's really hard to draw that line between this is my opinion and this is what I've learned without coming across like as someone who's like you know coming saying like you know I studied this um and this is right and this is wrong um like you're know, finding that balance between okay this is facts this is what I've learned and this is my opinion um, because I find a lot of people, when it comes to environmental issues that I know, like my friends and family, they'll message me and be like, oh, what do you think about this? And yeah, I don't know, it's hard to even explain because it's hard to, I'm still like getting my head around it, if that makes sense. 100%, yeah. People don't realise how black, um, how not black and white the subject is. Exactly. Um, does anyone else have anything to say on that? I think just like, um you'll do a unit and you'll start to understand some of the basic concepts and things. And as you start to understand more, you understand how huge um, uh, just a, a single topic can be in terms of how much you could learn, how much depth you could go into and how you cannot go into that depth in a one trimester unit in however many, you know, maybe five, four or five months or something like that. And yeah, and you want to know so much because you feel like you need to know a lot to help a lot, but you, especially even now we're in sort of early stages, even though we're about to graduate of like, where, where are we going? We're going to have to probably specialize because each, each little area is just so huge um, that, yeah. And even like what Lillian was saying, like, it's hard to when when people ask you about an opinion about something that's going on in the world or about some you know one little aspect of something that's going on and you might not perhaps really know a lot about that but you feel like you should um i find that sometimes where someone will ask me oh you're into the environment you're into that what do you think of this and i'll just go you know what i didn't know any of that i actually yeah. didn't you know and i feel like i should you know yeah. Do you guys think that um, it's possible for staff such as lecturers or student chairs to mitigate this sort of pressure within the classroom? And how could they, if so? I think, I'm going to cut in, I think they actually do, yeah. Um, well, I found this term ancestrally, they've actually done a pretty good job. Like, for yeah. instance, um, the wildlife conservation unit we're doing at the moment is all focused on solutions instead of the problems like that self and I think there's like a level of care that goes into yeah. that too. Even when Mike rocked up with a Hawaiian show in one of the most depressing lectures ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't yeah, know. I, think I feel solutions say that one more time, sorry? In solution space, like they've talked about all the different approaches that you can have towards a particular issue instead of dwelling like on the finalities of the issue if that makes sense like yeah 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 sure. it all. On, on the other hand though i think if you're going to be concerned with these kind of things it's also important to be able to deal with them personally so if yeah. you're going to be coming in contact uh, with these topics for the rest of your life for a big part of your career taking it in stride and sort of working out how you best deal with it rather than going out uh, and, and trying to get help from people to deal with it yeah. is going to be important and useful. Yeah. Um, what do you reckon has been the most rewarding part of your environmental science course or studying what you study? It's a very broad question. So feel free to take it how you want. We'll jump in. Um, I think, the most rewarding thing has been able to go and do volunteering. So through the course, so um, 
global environmental placement, going overseas and volunteering for three or four weeks in an organization that's doing conservation work um, and also with professional practice and other elective units. Like actually being able to go put what we've learned into practice and actually do something that's, you know, helping whatever it is that that organization is doing. Like, you know, it's all going well to sit in the classroom and learn about all these issues. Um, but for me, the most rewarding thing is being able to go out and actually physically do something and help out, even if it's only a small, like it's only a small part of fixing a problem. Um, yeah, it's still really rewarding and also fun and a great experience. Yeah. Do you think that uh, volunteering sort of solidified your knowledge and what you've learned? Um, yeah, definitely. Like, again, it's one thing to sit in a classroom, learn about these different things, even doing pracs and, for example, going and doing um, veg surveys or something like that, to then actually do it in real life where it's actually contributing to something. Um, I did a bit of work with a company here in Bendigo where all day, every day I was doing water testing, veg surveys, soil surveys, um, things like that. And it's like, I've, yes, I've done similar things at uni, but this is actually real life contributing to something. I just, yeah. it feels like you learn more when it's actual testing that's going on reports and everything like that. It almost feels like more critical. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Does anyone else have anything they want to add? I think more from a, like a self-centered point of view, just, it's just been very, yeah, there are some things that are, you know, there's some dark concepts, but it's just been extremely enjoyable for the most part. Like um, even the work doesn't, often doesn't, it feels like work, but the, the sense of that real sense of achievement when you've done this big project where you've actually gone out into the field, collected your own data, come back, compiled yeah. it all, found trends, written it all up. That in itself is very rewarding. And as well as what Lillian was talking about, just um, volunteering, going out and doing stuff, not just in Australia, but I've done a few overseas um, stints as well. And that, that's just been, you know, the best, best time of my life. So from, I guess, less of a, you know, um, contributing to the field kind of standpoint, more from like a self-centered standpoint. It's been very rewarding in that sense as well. Yeah. I yeah. guess the ability to actually like, you know, we're doing this in our own time, we're not doing, this isn't a, something that's been organized by one of our lecturers. This is something that we can actually do outside of the university context, have these sort of discussions, which I think is super rewarding and really cool. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there's a lot of, courses where you can actually have a zoom meeting just for fun and like discuss different topics within your course if that makes sense yeah i think that's another thing as well because certainly coming from um musical theater a lot of the people were there more for themselves than yeah but it, but then the difference coming to this course is just like everyone no one's really there because of their ego yeah because People who are, you know, focused on their ego don't go into something, you know, conservation, you know. Yeah, it's a collective effort. Everyone wants to contribute. Everyone wants to be part of the team, you know, and it's, it's that that's also in itself very rewarding because you come across people that really care about stuff that's important and care about stuff that's bigger than themselves. You know, I think that's really cool as well. Yeah. Um, so this is sort of stemming from the last question. It's very similar. Have any opportunities come your way that you would have thought that you wouldn't have thought um, you'd have the opportunity to take if you hadn't have done the course? I'm going to jump in again because I... I saw you like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at the start of last year, since the start of 2019, I'd never been overseas. Um, and by the end of it, I had been on four overseas trips. So that's something that I never would have thought <laughs> would happen um, by studying this course. And another thing about doing those is so I did a, um, went on a, a research trip to Fiji where we surveyed coral reefs. And one of the staff members that came with us, um, 
is or organizers run to the Middle Island Penguin Project. So they have the Maremmas in Warrnambool. And so from that, I got to go down and do a placement there, which it's like my childhood dream come true. I used to always make my parents take me down there so I could see the dogs at um, Flagstaff Hill and all that. And to actually go and get to volunteer on the project was amazing. Like it's an absolute childhood dream come true. Cool. That sounds, yeah. That sounds amazing. So where was that? Um, that was in Warrnambool. So yeah. Middle Island. Um, penguins, they have, yeah, the Maroma Guardian dogs. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if you guys have heard about it or you might have seen the movie Oddball. Which yeah, is... my sister's actually in it. <laughs> you were in it? No, my sister's in it. She plays like the younger version of the main, um, the main actor. Wow, that's so cool. I know. <laughs> wow, small world. <laughs> Ido, you want to talk? <laughs> Um, yeah, for me, for me also, uh, the, vol the volunteering opportunities that have come along with the course have been amazing. And yeah, same for me, maybe, maybe some of the, the coolest things I've done in my life, definitely some of the most interesting things I've done in my life, uh, working with communities, um, that I probably wouldn't otherwise ever work with for the betterment of the environment. And so I always... I'm always interested in other cultures and other people around the world and combining that with uh, helping them and, and, and the environment simultaneously has been amazing. So yeah, the, the volunteering opportunities is just, yeah, a, a, a highlight and an amazing thing that I got to do. And that's been yeah. super, super rewarding. Cool. Guys, did you, have you guys all done an overseas volunteering trip? Just give me a thumbs up if you have. <laughs> do that's amazing. Like, uh, yeah, I don't think I know anyone else in different courses, um, apart from environmental science, that actually do get those opportunities to go overseas and make huge differences in other communities other than their own. Do you think the environmental science? Do you think environmental science is underrepresented in primary education or secondary education? I personally think, yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, during my primary school, I think, I don't actually recall any opportunities where I got to interact with people who were either studying or were experts in this field. Um, and I went to school yeah, on the peninsula. It was so accessible and I don't remember any primary school experience like that. In terms of secondary education, you know, obviously, you can sort of stream into biology or chemistry or physics. Um, there's outdoor ed, there's uh, Duke of Ed. But yeah, I didn't find that there was enough opportunity or, I mean, I don't want to use the word compulsory, but compulsory <laughs> involvement in those kind of um, activities. Did you guys find the same or did you guys have a different experience? I know obviously, Jacob, you lived in Tasmania, so I don't know if there was a different uh, way of going about it in the school curriculum? No, nah, no, it was pretty underrepresented, I mean, underrepresented really, I think, especially in primary um, education, even like an off, an off cert of like environmental science and stuff, just sort of like other, like say for instance, indigenous studies is a field that is definitely majorly underrepresented in yeah. um, primary and secondary education. And yeah. I feel like that's, in some sense is a bit of a an understanding of that can help with environmental science as well yeah. especially like like in Australia and a lot of there's a lot of environmental movements at the moment that are trying to work really closely with traditional owners and go through all the right channels and with permission from them and and there's so much knowledge that is out there yeah I mean there's obviously with Sorry. the bushfires, like the bushfires and the traditional burning methods that are going on at the moment, that's sort of obviously been a very big and talked about, you know, movement this year, especially after the summer we had. And so yeah, there's plenty of others out there like that can really help. Like yeah. That. And there's definitely opportunity to delve into Indigenous education, specifically even in like, you know, history and humanities subjects. It doesn't have to be an environmental science 
subject. Um, yeah, I feel like there's definitely the opportunity, but it's a missed opportunity that I guess we haven't taken on board quick enough. Um, yeah, has anyone had similar experiences or completely different experiences? I've had a bit of a different experience um, because at my high school, so I went to school in Bendigo. Um, I went to Catholic College Bendigo, so it was a semi-private school, technically a private school, but not a grammar school yeah. um, or anything like that. But I actually studied VC environmental science, so units one to four. Um, and I first did an environmental science unit in year 10. Um, there was a year 10 environmental science as well. So I didn't realize that not everybody had that opportunity. Um, it wasn't until I went to university and I was talking to you know the people that I'd met um, at like our course information days and stuff like that, that I realized that not every school offers that. And I was, I was really shocked and a bit sad that it's out there and it's available, but schools aren't willing or can't or won't make it available to their students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it was my favourite course, um, like, yeah, subject at high school was my favourite and I loved it. And that's definitely part of what inspired me to do this course. So I was quite sad for people when they, yeah, said that they didn't even have that opportunity. Yeah. Do you find that some of the stuff you learnt within the unit is actually quite similar to what you've learnt in the course? Yeah, definitely. Um, first year, the first year subjects were quite similar to a lot of the stuff that we learnt um, in high school. Amazing. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds really good. Um, Max, did you have a similar experience? Uh, I'm, I, I remember bits and pieces of learning here and there, lots about the similar stuff. Like I remember in grade two, one of, you know, how you have like a theme every term. I remember one of our themes in grade two was like endangered animals. And I loved that. And then in high school, um, there was an elective subject that was environmental science and I did do it and but I couldn't remember I couldn't tell you that was in year nine or ten and then just little bits like um just in general science like obviously you have to do general science until grade 11 and 12 yeah and there were definitely um applicable components to that like I remember learning about species classification and a couple of things on genetics and stuff um so it's it's maybe that like we've sort of you guys were discussing that it's there but it's not quite developed enough yeah. perhaps i think that's probably true yeah sorry alex i had a different experience and i can only speak from that i went to a semi-private um college or whatever you want to call it and i loved the school and yeah. i think the it just completely depends on the location of the school and the amount of funding as well because um, we're quite privileged where we live um, um, in communities as well because um, but it's not available for everyone as well because um, the communities that we live in together. I guess like those environmental science in like year nine, year 10, that was all everyone did at the camps. Um, so there was a bit more of a focus on that outdoor education as well as the science aspects of it um, is what I found. And it's also just like from what the kid's personal interest is. If someone's interested in, say, sport, they're not, maybe not going to go for a hard chemistry based environmental science, if that makes sense. Yeah. I could. Okay, you, you're breaking up a little bit. <laughs> you first. <laughs> I'm not sure who it was. Yeah, you you broke okay, up. You keep right. going. You do you. I think we got the general gist of what you're saying, so it's all good. <laughs> um. <laughs> so going back to Ido's question, actually, at, not question, his statement, sort of at the start of this uh, call, if you could give someone advice about studying environmental science, what would you say? It doesn't have to be one sentence. <laughs> oh, I, I, I had something to say here because yeah. I've, been, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Um, so, uh, so as I was saying at the start of the conversation, 
a lot of people get attracted to this course because they love the outdoors and and personally that's why I was attracted to this course not because I had any nuanced understanding of what conservation is or what conservation actually entails Mm -hmm. so uh, I think a a good suggestion for someone um, that's that's looking to to study uh, conservation biology is to actually do a bit of reading about what conservation biology is what takes place um, in terms of conservation actions right so conservation isn't just uh, caring for animals it's also killing animals <laughs> and things like that so um, I, I, I recently came across a, a excellent paper by um, Sole, Michael Sole, uh, arguably the father of conservation biology. I think it was 1985 he wrote it. It's called uh, "What Is Conservation Biology?" And he sort of go he sort of goes through his arguments uh, systemically and ethically about what conservation biology is about. And he wrote this when conservation biology was at its uh, well, pretty much at its genesis. So yeah, it's de- definitely at the very least read um, uh, uh, what what the founders of the field thought about the field and just generally what conservation actions entail. Yeah, it's some great advice. Um, you do get a little bit of a, a rude awakening at some parts in the course, I think. I guess because I love the course so much, I'd always be like, yes, do it. But yeah. I was saying you need to be prepare yourself for you know the different aspects that conservation does involve and as you said earlier about you know we are faced with like presented with all these issues and we really see reality like it's see reality in what's actually happening and that can be quite confronting and disturbing so yeah just to be aware of it um and yeah a bit prepared i guess nothing will ever prepare you 100 percent for when you are faced with the facts but just to know that you know as ida said it's not all animals and outdoors like it, it can be kind of heavy content yeah so you think just sort of preparing and trying not to take everything well taking it seriously but not taking it to heart too much i guess i guess so yeah yeah cool um anyone else Yeah, I think just in terms of, uh, and I think this kind of speaks to what you guys were talking about, but just um, enjoying it a lot. And that kind of takes the edge off the the heaviness of it. So one thing that I thought when you posed this question is just integrating it more into your daily life and practicing it. Like when you go for walks, try and try and have a look at what birds are out there. Try and have a look at what you know, plants you can identify and see if you can see some of those cool relationships. And that's kind of, that's very enjoyable and very rewarding. And that's kind of the fun component of it. It's not all this doom and gloom. You want to, you want to enjoy the good parts as well as be, you know, want to fix things that you think might be going wrong or something like that. Yeah. Do you find that you're doing that automatically now? Uh, yeah, I hope, I mean, again, like I was talking about before, it's, you are just constantly confronted with how much there is to learn. So even just walking through a landscape, you, you're more struck by how much you don't know than how much you do know. But yeah, it's, it's that in itself is inspiring, I think. Um, Cause it's just like, Oh, what's going on there? What's going on there? And that's kind of the fun kind of creative side of it of, wanting to know more and that's that's cool i like it yeah yeah constantly being passionate and knowledge thirsty <laughs> yeah I, I i totally agree with that i think the, the the coolest thing about studying environmental science and existing within an environment is that you get to understand the environment to an extent that uh, other people don't and you really Every every time you step outside, it's interesting because you, uh, you can understand everything that's going on around you to, uh, I guess, a deeper degree than you would otherwise. Yeah, I think, Chloe, you sort of said something similar last time we talked about how even though as undergraduate students, we 
uh, we don't have the expertise that some of our lecturers and unit chairs do, but we are still, I guess, um, more knowledgeable to an extent than just the general public. Yeah, like you've still got three years worth of a degree behind you to support your <laughs> opinions. If um, yeah, I just don't. I don't think people should discredit their opinions at all yeah. because they might not be. Um, but yeah, obviously in comparison. The other thing that I was going to add to that is um, I think approach it with such an open mind, of course, in the way that the um, boys have said, but in like not being so precious with your time um, and seeing it as a big experiment to find out what you like. And I think it's that such a cliche thing that people say when you go to uni, use that time to like find yourself or find your interest because you don't really get that chance again. Um, I've lived the student life for five or so years like um ter what are we doing tertiary <laughs> tertiary student life um but yeah and i think that coming to a close it gets a bit realer um and i've got to start being an adult and you can still definitely explore but you might have other expenses and things to do now or have other commitments so yeah now's the time to find out what you like and if you lose a night doing something that wasn't your jam then that's just a night you don't have to do it ever again yeah, yeah, that's a and really I say night, like a lot of catching, a lot of nocturnal catching stuff is at night. Could be a day. Yeah, it's a really interesting um, sort of angle to come at it with, with not to be so precious mm -hmm. with your time and mm -hmm. actually, yeah, use it. Well, use it wisely, but um, yeah. you don't have to find what you're interested in after a year of studying. Yeah, and a lot of the focus I know even coming from year 12 and having a mum as a teacher and things like that, the the expectation that gets placed on a kid um, to know what they're going to do for the rest of their life to make that choice in the next couple of years. I think it's a load of hogswash to start off with, but um, enjoy the journey of actually becoming a student instead of just constantly focusing and thinking that you need to be an expert right yeah. away. Like, yeah, and even that exploration of what you do like, it's an exploration of um how you feel how you form your opinion as well and that can shift and change over time too so don't hold yourself to yeah not being able to change yeah i think that there's uh there is an emphasis placed on this in year 12 but there are other pathways that you can take to one destination as well so i guess not being so um so determined to follow one specific pathway and sort of take it as it comes and almost take it day by day is something that I would say. Um, not to the extent where you do your assignment like the night before, <laughs> but yeah, to the extent where you can actually take in as much as possible, if that makes sense. Jacob, your last person, what would you have to say? Yeah, like similar to what Edo says, it's, I mean, I was just saying I like, wanted to do I love being outside, but then it, at some point during the course of it, then you realise how real it is, and it can it sort of could go either way. Where you can be overwhelmed, and or it could just be a point where you realise that it grows into this deeper knowledge and passion that you have. And um, I know first year, if I look back first year till now, I feel like I've changed a lot as a person, and my knowledge base has grown a lot. And I'm like, that image is just such a great experience. And a privilege that we have to be able to learn environmental management. And so it's just, yeah, making the most of opportunities that arise. And as everyone said already, their highlights have been the experiences that they've had through the course. So, like yeah. the volunteering and overseas opportunities. So, just taking those and using those as a base to, yeah, gain more knowledge and, and yeah, have good, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a great way to end the discussion. Um, guys, thank you so, so much for coming. I know I said that before, but it really is, it's so lovely to know that there's people who are, I guess, willing to put in the time from outside uni and have these sort of talks. I think, I've said this a million times, but I think that undergraduate students truly are severely underrepresented in the, like, in the media, specifically environmental media and, um, environmental resources so yeah i'm really really grateful and hopefully we can do this soon um 
Yeah. <laughs>